This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an action, sci-fi, thriller film called Lockout. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 2079, Secret Service Director Scott Langrall interrogates CIA agent Snow about a fatal incident in a motel room in New York. After being hit in the face several times during the interrogation, Snow recounts exchanging blows with a man in a suit. While the man was strangling him in the bathroom sink, Snow grabbed a wire and used it to electrocute him. Then, he tackled him out of the bathroom and shot him in the head. He suddenly got a call from his contact who told him to leave the motel room immediately because he was being set up. Snow soon discovered that fellow CIA agent Frank Armstrong was fatally wounded. Before passing away, Frank gave Snow his cherished lighter. When the police arrived, Snow took a suitcase lying beside Frank and escaped to the roof. A helicopter soon appeared on the rooftop, so Snow had no choice but to jump from the building. Fortunately, he landed on a mattress on top of a garbage bin. Snow fled on a stolen motorcycle as the police continued to pursue him. During the chase, the contact called him and instructed him to go to the subway station. Upon his arrival, he threw the suitcase towards the train before the doors could close. As the train started moving, Mace, the contact looked through the window and saw the police apprehending Snow. Langrell tells Snow that Frank was selling secrets about the government space programs, but Snow contends that he was protecting them. He accuses Snow of killing Frank and shows him a video of Snow shooting him in the head. Snow attests that it didn't happen that way, but Langrell claims that he saw it with his own eyes. Snow points out that Frank called him because he no longer trusts the CIA, and he wanted someone outside the agency to protect the package. An officer beats up Snow to compel him to reveal their backup, but Agent Harry Shaw interrupts them. Shaw offers to help Snow in exchange for information about his backup, so Snow asks him to pick up the package. However, Snow notes that he doesn't know where Mace put it. After Mace got off the train, he put the suitcase in a locker at the station. He got arrested after his gun accidentally discharged and hit a police officer. Shaw again asks Snow to reveal his contact, but Snow refuses, knowing that he'd reveal it to Langrall. However, Shaw notices that Snow had written Mace's name on the table to keep Langrall from hearing them. Later on, Shaw asks the agency to run a trace on Mace. That night, Langrall informs President Jeff Warnock about Snow's arrest. He notes that Snow claims that he was set up, but he adds that he saw Snow shoot Frank with his own eyes. Warnock tells Langrell that he has to cut their meeting short because he has to meet his daughter, Emily, but an aide discloses that she changed her schedule and went off on a humanitarian mission. Miles above the earth, Barnes, the prison warden, a briefing about MS-1, a maximum security prison in outer space. He asserts that the experimental prison is a success because there have been no riots or physical abuse in the facility, but Emily points out that they're only able to avoid those situations because they put the prisoners under stasis. She's concerned that prisoners suffer from dementia and psychosis due to the procedure, but Barnes claims that those are just minor complications. Upon their arrival on MS-1, Barnes asks Emily and her aides to put on their radiation tags, which will emit a yellow light when there's a problem. While showing Emily the stasis pods for the general population, Barnes notes that they will take her to an interview room where she can speak with an inmate. The warden stresses that they don't allow weapons on the prisoner's side of the room, but Emily's bodyguard, Hawk, hides a firearm on his ankle before the interview. Meanwhile, Langrell informs Snow that he's been convicted of first-degree murder and espionage and is sentenced to 30 years on MS-1. Back on MS-1, Emily interviews Heidel, a prisoner convicted with 53 counts of aggravated physical assault. When Emily asks about his conviction, Heidel starts taunting her. So, Hawk shoves his head against the table to compel him to cooperate. Heidel discloses that he was a pickpocket before he was convicted of assault and reveals that he had stolen Hawk's firearm. Heidel then knocks out Hawk and shoots the other bodyguard in the room. An explosion occurs when Heidel tries to shoot another bodyguard on the other side of the interview room. After Heidel kills the bodyguard, Emily runs to the control room and hides under the table. Heidel soon arrives and forces a technician to release the prisoners from the pods. Heidel eventually finds Emily after killing the technician. Not long after, the prisoners come out of their pods to go after the guards. Heidel attempts to violate Emily, but a prisoner named Alex stops him because they need hostages to prevent the authorities from killing them. When the inmates see several ships approaching the prison complex, they force a technician to prepare the automated defense systems. Alex doesn't want to turn it on yet, but Heidel pushes the button to activate the turret guns. After the guns blast the approaching shuttles, Alex castigates Heidel and lets him know that he's not in charge of their prison revolt. Langrell soon informs the president that inmates have taken over MS-1. 
He considers deploying the special forces to storm the prison within six hours, but Shaw warns him that Emily could get killed if they launch the assault. Shaw then suggests sending Snow to rescue Emily. Snow refuses to go, but he agrees when Shaw secretly reveals that Mace is in MS-1. When the inmates confiscate the IDs of the hostages, an aide named Catherine notices that Emily is wounded and shivering, so she grabs a lab coat and puts it on her. Soon, Snow, Langrell, and Shaw board a ship to head to a space station near MS-1. Snow thinks that Emily could already be dead, but Shaw explains that she's wearing a telemetry medical transmitter that indicates that she's still alive. However, the telemetry is showing that she's losing blood. Langrell gives Snow a map for an escape pod to leave the prison. Then, Shaw hands Snow a tube and tells him that it's an explosive that will detonate when he joins the two ends. Alex sustains an injury in his arm when he deals with an agitated inmate. He tells the prisoners that he needs someone to stitch his wound, so they take Emily to him, thinking she's a doctor because of her lab coat. Soon, Langrell and the rest of the team arrive at the space station. When they contact the inmates, they see Emily treating Alex's wound. Snow points out that the inmates don't know that Emily is the president's daughter because they seem to think that she's a doctor. Alex decides to start killing hostages to show Langrell that he's in charge of the situation. As Heidel drags Barnes to the airlock, the warden begs for his life and tries to tell them that Emily is the president's daughter to negotiate, but Heidel opens the hatch to send him into space before he can finish his sentence. Alex then tells Langrell that he will kill another hostage after an hour. As Snow attempts to break into the prison, a negotiator convinces Alex to release one hostage. The negotiator hints that they should release a wounded woman, so Alex agrees to let Emily go. However, Heidel wants Emily to stay. So, he shoots Catherine and tells the negotiator that she can be the wounded hostage. An inmate soon sees Snow trying to break in and reports it to Alex. Realizing that the negotiator is being dishonest, Alex shoots him in the head. After Catherine dies from her wound, an inmate takes Emily and Hawk back to the control room to be with the other hostages. Alex tells Heidel to find the man who broke into the prison and kill him. When another inmate asks why Alex won't kill Heidel, he reveals that Heidel is his brother. Alex finds out that Emily is the president's daughter when he sees Warnock on TV. Inside the elevator, Emily attempts to escape by spraying the fire extinguisher on the inmate escorting them. Hawk hits the prisoner in the face but fails to knock him out. The elevator doors suddenly open, with Snow on the other side. Snow fights with the inmate and manages to knock the gun from his hand, but the man grabs him by the neck and strangles him, so he wraps the explosive tube around the inmate's neck. The inmate runs for his gun, but his head explodes before he can shoot Snow. Emily hits Snow in the head with the fire extinguisher before fleeing with Hawk. When they reach a secure room, Hawk shoots the panel to prevent anyone from getting in. While Snow is trying to locate Mace's pod, Langrell tells him that he needs to hurry up and get Emily, because she's losing oxygen. The inmates soon bring two engineers to open the door to the room where Emily is hiding, but Alex shoots one of them to strike fear into the surviving engineer to motivate him. As Snow tries to get to Emily's location, he comes across the pit holding the prison's torsion system. An engineer knows that the torsion system's gravity will keep them afloat, but an inmate attacks him before he can jump to the other side. When Heidel sees them fighting on the security camera, he shoots the console, causing the torsion system to shut down. Snow manages to hang on by a rope, but he falls when it snaps. Luckily, the engineer at the space station manages to reactivate the torsion system, allowing Snow to float to the platform. Hawk discovers that their oxygen supply is almost out, so he shoots himself to buy more time for Emily. Soon, Snow reaches Emily's location, but she's unconscious due to oxygen deprivation, so he revives her by injecting her eye with a neurotransmitter stimulant and performing mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. An engineer soon opens the door to the room, but Snow and Emily are already gone. Shaw guides them through the vents to make their way to the escape pod, but they lose the signal when Alex asks an engineer to shut off the prison's communication system. As Snow tries to figure out the way, they fall through the vents. Snow then takes Emily to the infirmary to treat her wound. Emily asks Snow about his plan to free the other hostages, but Snow's only objective is to rescue her. Later, Alex alerts the other prisoners about Emily's attempt to escape, so Snow tells her to wear an inmate's uniform. He then forcibly cuts her hair and dyes it black using a mixture of engine oil, water, and coffee. Afterward, he hits her in the face to make her look more like a prisoner. Snow and Emily search for Mace in the general population area, but an inmate wouldn't let them pass. The prisoners start chasing them after Snow headbutts the inmate, 
As they flee, they come across Mace, but they learn that he has dementia due to his time in stasis. Snow asks Mace where he kept the package, but he can't make sense of his response. When the inmates start breaking down the doors, Emily suggests leaving Mace behind because other prisoners won't hurt him, but Snow notes that he needs him. As the trio makes their way to the escape pod, MS-1 collides with the International Space Station. Following the impact, a door automatically closes and locks Mace inside a room with a hull breach. As Snow looks for something to open the door, Emily hears Mace rambling about a case and a locker. Mace then repeats the words, I see you, and I foresee you, before freezing to death. Later, the engineer informs Langrell that MS-1 is falling to Earth because there's no one to keep it in orbit. Snow and Emily soon find the escape pod, but there's only room for one of them. Snow tells Emily to board the pod and claims that he'll take another pod. After Emily gets inside, Snow goes to the window to watch it launch into space. However, he soon discovers that Emily is not in the pod when she turns up behind him. Emily got out after realizing that the other hostages could get killed when her father orders an assault on the facility. As soon as she's safe, Emily convinces Snow to help her rescue the hostages by claiming that Mace told her the suitcase's location. Suddenly, Heidel shows up on the monitors and starts shooting hostages to compel Emily to disclose her location. After she reveals that she's in level 3, Heidel shoots the surviving hostages so Snow and Emily flee to the elevator. The lift soon gets stuck, and they end up in a lab where they find evidence that the prison administrators are experimenting on the inmates. Alex and the other inmates soon find the pair in the lab. Snow runs for a gun and tries to shoot the inmates, but he gets shot first and falls into a shaft. Alex takes Emily back to the control room and discovers that Heidel has killed the other hostages. Alex hits Heidel in the face out of anger and instructs his men to turn on the communication system. With the communications back online, Shaw contacts Snow on a secure line and asks him if he learned the suitcase's location. When Snow reveals that he failed, Shaw advises him to escape on his own because there's no way to rescue Emily. After disclosing that the prison is falling out of the sky, Shaw instructs Snow to get to Dock 9, where he will find an engineering suit that will allow him to float in space. Langrell notifies the inmates that they'll soon attack the prison, so Alex tells Emily to contact her father and ask him to call off the assault. However, Emily tells Warnock to blow the prison out of the sky because all the hostages are dead. Warnock refuses to send an assault team because of Emily, so Langrell invokes the 25th Amendment to relieve Warnock of his command temporarily. Shuttles soon fly towards the prison complex when Langrell authorizes the assault. Inside the prison, Heidel stabs Alex and kills one of his men because he refuses to let him violate Emily. Soon, Heidel comes after Emily, so she quickly grabs a lighter and a flammable spray from her bag to light Heidel's face on fire. Heidel quickly puts out the fire and tries to stab her, but Snow grabs the knife and knocks him out. Heidel and the prisoners chase after them, so Emily and Snow run to Dock 9 and lock them out. Soon, one of the shuttles plants a bomb on MS-1, with less than one minute on the timer. Shaw warns Snow about the bomb, so Emily and Snow jump out of the prison complex as soon as they put on the engineering suits. Emily falls unconscious as they enter the Earth's atmosphere, so Snow grabs her and releases her suit before activating his parachute. Soon, after they land, the authorities take Snow into custody. Emily is taken to the hospital, but she escapes to find the locker where Mace hid the suitcase. She recalls Mace's ramblings and realizes that he hid the case in a locker in Union Station with the password, ICU-I4CU. After retrieving the case, she goes to the motel room in New York to investigate what happened there. Emily realizes that Langrell was watching the room from another building with binoculars. Snow appeared to be shooting Frank from a mirror covering Langrell's view, but he actually shot someone who was attacking them. When Shaw visits Snow at the police station, Snow reveals that he has the briefcase. Shaw unlocks the case, but he discovers that it's empty. Snow points out that no one told Shaw the combination to the case, so Shaw confesses that he's the mole who set them up. Shaw notes that he'll get out of prison in three years because the agency needs someone like him. Furious about Frank's death, Snow burns Shaw's face with a lit cigarette before the police take him away. As Snow leaves the station, he discovers a memory card hidden in Frank's later and recalls Frank telling him not to let anyone take it. He soon finds out that Emily is there waiting for him. Emily notes that she discovered that Snow's first name is Marion. She punches him in the face and teases him about the feminine sounding name, so Snow notes that they won't go anywhere with their relationship. Emily then tells him that they'll soon find out when they get to bed and do some horizontal exercise. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.